Rockington. I'm Nanda Barker Hook, and I'm here with Norman Kamalo, our town manager, for EHOP's annual Know Your Vote Social Distancing Edition. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Kamalo, for taking the time to answer a few questions about town meeting for us. Good afternoon. Thank you, Nanda, uh, and also thank you to EHOP for continuing to provide this service to the community, a service that I deem very essential for our democracy process here in town. You are making information available in advance to our citizens here in Hopkinton, in advance of town meeting. Thanks, thank you. Um, this interview is one of a four part series about town meeting and this year's um, articles on the warrant. And as many people who are watching have heard for the first time, town meeting is gonna be held on a Saturday uh, September 12th at 9.30 in the morning outside at the high school. And this year the warrant is especially short um, in order to reduce the length of um, town meeting in general for everyone's health and safety. So I want to ask by, I want to start by asking a question that might seem simple to you, uh, Mr. Kamala, but perhaps is not so obvious to residents, which is how has COVID impacted the town budget? Um, and are we receiving state aid? And is that aid covering our needs? First off, our hearts ache for those who have lost loved ones and have been negatively impacted by COVID-19. I know that here in Hawkington, some of us have lost jobs. Uh, some of us have had salaries cut because of COVID-19. I also want to thank Community Hopkinton, our first responders and town hall staff for their service, excellent service during this very day. On the revenue side, COVID-19 resulted in lower than expected new growth in the tax base, which is mostly tied, as you know, for residential new construction and residential upgrades and improvements. Activities that slowed down from March 2020 to June 2020. Additionally, local aid from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, while showing a 5.4% increase, is somewhat lower than originally anticipated. And expected receipts from our motor vehicle excise tax I expect it to be down somewhat when, as you have seen in past years, they typically rise each year. Mm. On the expense side, the proposed budget severely limits growth in staffing to just positions in the Hopkinton Public Schools that serve the direct needs of a growing student population in the classroom. And the addition of a single police officer to be funded in its initial year by the Legacy Farms Host Community Agreement. Overall, priorities in the budget are as follows. Sustain community services at fiscal 2020 levels. Fund only new classroom positions for Hopkinton Public Schools to address on enrollment growth. Defer all capital spending to future years meet contractual obligations for salary adjustments, minimize the use of one-time funding to support recurring expenses, and significantly preserve stabilization reserves to the extent possible as the eventual length of the recession is uncertain. In another noteworthy area, the Hopkinton Parks and Recreation Enterprise was severely impacted by COVID-19 in fiscal year 2020. We will be asking town meeting to consider a warrant article to fund that shortfall from existing parks and recreation retained earnings and the town's unrestricted certified free cash. In response to lessons learned from COVID-19, parks and recreation, which is run with an operating subsidy from the general fund is proposed to be deconsolidated with some high level programmatic costs 
to be covered by a new Parks and Rec Department budget in the general fund. Costs to support the town common, our beautiful town common, and other public spaces to be covered by a new line item in the Department of Public Works. User fee programs for camps, clinics, and other fee-based programs to be operated break even through a revolving fund. And for revenue and expenses at the Fruit Street facility, which has become one of the key destinations in town, uh, to remain as the sole activity covered under the existing Parks and Rec Enterprise Fund for fiscal year 2020. As final notes about the town's financial health, our cash position and cash flow is on track. The receipt of local aid from the state has continued without interruption. And the town standard and pause AAA bond rating, which allows the town to borrow at very low interest rates, was reviewed and affirmed in May 2020 in the depth of the uncertainty caused by COVID-19. So in a nutshell, those are the impacts of COVID-19 on our FY20 budget. In terms of, you asked the question whether state uh, COVID relief aid covers our needs or there's a gap. The town has received federal aid under the CARES Act, under emergency declarations for FEMA, and the schools have access to additional aid under a special education provision of the CARES Act. While these sources are tremendously helpful, there are restrictions on their use depths compared to our pre-COVID-19 expectations do exist as discussed. Thank you. Um, that was a, a lot of detail, very helpful detail. I have a, a couple of follow-up questions to say so that I can better understand. Um, the, I think you said the one of the priorities for the budget is to sustain level funding from FY 2020. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, as our town grows, does that mean we're going to be offering the same level of services for everybody in our growing population in FY 21? That's another very good question. Um, sustaining community services at fiscal year 2020 level is one of the dominant goals of the FY 21 budget. The budget does allow for continuation of current service levels through fiscal year 2021 and also includes significant targeted service increases for the Hopkinton Public Schools in fiscal year 2021, directly supporting classroom contact for a growing student population. Other service levels will remain substantially unchanged, except for the addition of the police officer I mentioned earlier. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so something that you also mentioned was it's very unusual this year, um, or FY21, we're not going to have any capital spending, spending or borrowing planned for FY21. So that's really unusual. Normally we're voting on new police cars or new fire trucks or new classrooms. There's always something. So I'm wondering what the impact is going to be with having no capital or borrowing in FY21. How is that going to impact our infrastructure and our services this coming year? Um, and are we going to be expecting more capital requests at next town meeting in 2021 as a result? All things being equal, it would be preferable to continue with capital improvements. However, COVID-19 is an unprecedented pandemic and calls for extraordinary measures. Deferring the actions that had been planned will result in an aging of our infrastructure as far as capital development is concerned. The town has carefully evaluated each request that has been deferred to ensure that none of the deferrals create a safety issue 
for the town's residents or staff, and to ensure that none of the repairs will generate more costly repairs down the road as a result of the delay. The decision to recommend delay in all capital improvements was made with a priority to one, support the increased operating budget needs, especially um, uh, in the school department. It was also made with the idea of holding on to available resources because the tempo of the recovery is uncertain. By this approach, the town will be in a position to continue sustaining service in fiscal year 2022 and beyond if the economic recovery is slow. The multi-year budget, which is on page 14 of the Appropriations Committee report, which is now been released, estimated a spike in capital spending in fiscal years 2022 to 2023 as a way to recover from the deferrals in this year's budget. And those proposals will be carefully revisited in the next budget cycle, as you rightly pointed out, there's more information about the shape and the tempo of the recovery is known. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned the Appropriations Committee report, um, which is, I recommend if anybody wants to learn about the budget or sort of the big picture of the budget going forward in FY21, it's a great document. You can find it on ehop.org. Um, I assume you can find it on the town website. Um, just to jump ahead to another question, where would someone find the Appropriations Committee report on the website? The Appropriations Committee report is on the town website and what I will do right after this meeting is to make sure that it prominently features okay. uh, on the main page. Uh, it, it is going to be our key reference document at town meeting and therefore we, we should put it prominently on the opening page. Okay. Terrific. Uh, I find that it's very a uh, great way to sort of understand the big picture, um, to read the at least the first few pages, which summarize sort of what to expect in this coming fiscal year. Um, let's see. I'm wondering, in general, um, the tax impact of the FY21 budget. How? How is an average household, and in Hopkinton, an average house is worth $632,500, according to the Appropriations Committee report. So someone who owns a house of that amount, how is it going to impact their tax bill? Another very good question. And as you know, that's uh, one of the topics of primary focus um, on the part of the select board during any budget process. Specifically to you, your question. For a person with the average value Hopkinton home assessed at 632,500, which is last year's tax level of approximately 10,638, will rise about $298 in connection with the general government spending within the tax levy is controlled by Proposition 2 and a half. And by another $115 in connection with the new budget for the construction of 16 public school classrooms. In total, the rise would be from 10,638 to about 11,051. As you know, this is an approximation because several factors, including the actual amount of new growth in the tax base, will not be finalized until October. So from all of that, I heard specifically $298 increase for someone who owns a home worth $632,500. Yes. Was 
additional, I, I didn't understand the part about the classrooms. Is that also in addition? You're correct, yes. The, the debt service for the new 16 public school classrooms has an impact of one one five hundred and fifteen dollars okay okay so in total then the the, the the dollar amount would be 298 dollars plus 115 dollars would be the increase for an average minimum correct okay so i'd like to ask about the status of the legacy farms community host agreement as it relates to funding um, for those who may not be familiar, the community host agreement is an agreement that the town and the developer of the Legacy Farm signed that includes provisions if school enrollment exceeds specific numbers. Um, and the, the agreement was just renegotiated this past June. So can you give us an update on the status of payments um, that have been made by the developer, what is still owed, and how the money is going to be allocated? The developer has made two sets of payments. The payments that were made under the old agreement and the payments that have been made under update seven. Let me start off with the payments made under the old agreement. $500,000 was paid and transferred to the school stabilization fund. Two sets of payments in the amount of $120,000 were paid towards public safety agencies and infrastructure. Those are the two payments under the old agreement. Let's now look at the payments under the new agreement. I'll start with the payments to this school department stabilization fund. A total of four million and thirty one thousand three hundred. So it's four zero three one three hundred. Here's the schedule. For those payments. 831,300 was to be paid within three business days of the full execution of Amendment 7. 1,246,950 to be paid on or before July 30th, 2020. 1,200,000 on or before June 30th, 2021. And 753,050 on or before December 31, 2021. To date, 831,300 was paid on June 25th, 2020. 1,246,950 was paid on July 30th, 2020. This, this leaves two outstanding payments. The first is 1,200,000 due June 30th, 2021. And the second is the 753,050 due December 31, 2021. Moving on. 13,190 paid to the town for the use in the town's discretion as further mitigation for the project within three business days of the date of the seventh amendment. That amount is fully paid as of now. It was paid on June 25th. 2020. Next, by June 30th, 2021, $500,000 
is due to the town for the purpose of defraying the design cost of a new public safety facility. Again, this amount is due in 2021. Next, $120,000 as mitigation for the costs incurred by the town again in dealing with increased demands on public safety agencies and infrastructure due on the date of the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the 90th, 90, 90th dwelling unit located within the senior housing development. Last but not least, $3 million due to the town for the development of the Main Street Corridor project, including the separated bike lanes, which are the component of the town wide network, fully paid. Um, thank you for all that information. The, the first sums of money that you mentioned, roughly the 831,000, and then there was 1,246, and then 1,002, and then 753. Are those all relating to the schools, those payments, or are they the, in terms of allocation of those particular funds, um, I don't think you mentioned sort of where those were going. Um, okay. They are going to the school department stabilization fund. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, just a couple of last questions. This one is um, relating to new growth. First, I just wanted to make sure that I have this correct. The term new growth, we use that, it's basically describes new taxes coming into town from new construction. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So new growth is expected to go down by 18% FY20 to FY21, according to the Appropriations Committee report. And meanwhile, education spending and employee benefits are on the rise. And this Im imbalance appears to be growing and has been on the radar for some time now. Um, the Appropriations Committee has expressed concern about su sustaining the budget going forward. Um, the town is forecasting a deficit of over a million dollars in FY24. And I'm wondering if you can just comment on that and talk about what the town is doing to prepare for that and how it might impact our taxes going forward. This is a brilliant question that accurately identifies a key financial challenge on the town's horizon. On the revenue side, Proposition 2.5 limits property tax increases at 2.5%. And for several years, the town has been able to both cover salary and benefit expenses substantially in excess of 2.5%, as well as additional costs for new positions by relying on very robust new growth. As a specific illustration of the town's reliance on new growth, even with the projected drop off in new growth revenue in fiscal year 2021, new growth will still provide over 48% of the new property tax revenue for Hopkinton. If new growth slows after the completion of legacy farms with the budget focus, an imbalance will emerge as revenue growth is kept at a number closer to 2.5%. If compensation costs for existing and needed staffing levels continue to grow at a rate substantially above 2.5 percent, that's going to be a challenge. Further, if school enrollment continues to rise, it is likely that additional debt will need to be taken on and serviced in connection with new school construction, further amplifying this challenge. 
on a macro level, the town is preparing for this challenge by clearly identifying the issue to support broad public discussion about the trade-off between the desire for quality services and the acceptability of tax burden. No wonder the electors every year emphasize tax impact. Ultimately, future sessions of the town meeting will strike this balance. On a more tactical level, the town continues to manage and control costs by aggressively managing healthcare and other significant costs, by tightly controlling staff growth outside the enrollment driven public schools, and by maintaining strong financial reserves and financial policies that support future borrowing at the lowest possible cost. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's um that's a lot to digest as as uh and it does seem like a, a definite challenge moving ahead. Um so I expect we'll be hearing more about it and more discussions about it sort of moving forward. Um I'm just doing my best to sort of keep up on a general level, you know, not being involved in the daily numbers in any way or being in town hall, it's sort of, uh, it can be hard to sort of understand the bigger implications, but this this issue did sort of jump as something that seems to come up every year in the budget discussions or more in more recent years um, and is worth sort of highlighting as a, as a challenge moving forward. Um, okay, so my last question is a very topical question. It relates to recent national and local discussions about divesting funds from police departments um, and reallocating them to non-policing forms of public safety and community support, such as social services, youth services, mental health, um, and other community resources. And we're curious if there are any shift in funds of this nature in the, in the public safety budget in FY21. In terms of providing content, I think it is helpful to, to think of two things. Um, one, one of, I think the accomplishments um, that this community uh, has um, in a very long list of things that we do well is how we have grown the youth and family services department in the past years. Um, I have been with the community um, for 10 years and I can say proudly uh, that I have had the front row seat um, watching the growth the effectiveness of, of that department. And simultaneously, uh, in my last response to how we're going to manage the, the balance um, between the dwindling new growth and the growing needs, I mentioned how we've tactfully been control. And to that end, if you look at the police department budget, it hasn't grown substantially at all. Mm. And relative to the proposed FY21 budget, it's important to notice the following. The Hawkington Police Department budget only grows by 0.9%, less than 1%. The Hopkinton Public Schools budget is growing by 6.6%. KIFTEC, the Regional Vocational Technical School budget, is growing up by 12.9%. And most spectacularly and proudly so, the Youth and Family Services Department is growing up by 32.2%. 
The fiscal year 2021 pro budget provides all the funding needed to sustain our excellent police services at the FY 2020 levels and includes the $60,000 in legacy farms, non-education post community agreement funding to support the addition of that one police officer. The proposed budget does not include additional specific shifts in funding from public safety to other categories. However, I can say, as you may know, over the past years, the town has relied on our free care, as well as end of year budget transfers. And I'm sure if you look at those numbers, you will see the police department sharing its budget with other departments. If people have follow-up questions um, and they want to learn more before showing up at town meeting, who, they, who should they direct the questions to and how can they have those answered? Yeah, um, specifically um, through uh, the town shared university, as you know, we've now invested in the position of the CFO. And therefore, uh, all questions regarding the budget uh, should go through Tim O'Leary. Uh, he can be reached at the following email address, T-O-L-E-A-R-Y at hopkintonma.gov. Again, T O L E A R at hawkingtonma.gov. A link to an extensive analysis of the fiscal 2021 budget can be found in the Appropriations Committee report on the home page of the town website labeled Annual Town Meeting Appropriation Committee Report. Uh, you had asked this question, I've confirmed. That report is on the town's landing page on the left hand side. You can click on the label annual town meeting appropriation committee report. Hard copies of this report will be available at the town meeting and advanced hard copies can be obtained again by contacting Tim O'Leary. Thank you. Okay, great. We'll also write that up and, and post that alongside this video. Um, so I just want to thank you so much again, Mr. Kamala. We really appreciate your time, all the effort you put into coming up with all these good, uh, thorough answers. It's very helpful. Um, it's good to know where people can follow up with, with more questions. And um, I just want to also thank HCAM. Um, HCAM always helps us with Know Your Vote every year, and it's, it's no this year. It's just all online this year. And, they're very helpful in, in producing this for us. So thank you, HCAM. Um, and then just a couple of basic reminders. Again, town meeting starts on September 12th at 9.30 in the morning at the high school outside. You can show up as early as 8.30 to get settled. Um, once you're seated, in your seat at town meeting, activity is limited and uh, just to speaking at the mic and going to the restroom. Um, so the meeting is gonna continue until all articles have been voted on. And please use eHop as a resource. Um, if we can all educate ourselves ahead of time about the articles, town meeting is just gonna go more smoothly and efficiently. And then um, again, just a reminder, this is one of four Q and A's that eHop is hosting and you'll be able to find them all on our website and social media. So again, thank you, Mr. Kamalo and thanks HK.